Mike here with the Royal Baby Group in Cortland, New York. Now folks, I'd like to invite you all down, expecting couples, men, women, whoever you may be, to not only view the beautiful babies that we have here in our showroom, but to get a bit more educated about the decisions that you should be making and that will affect your pregnancy. Now folks, you know where we're located. Room 281 in Cortland, at the home of no hassle, no razzle dazzle. Hey folks, here at Fusillo Babies, we've teamed up in an effort to get the word out there about parental factors affecting development with the Royal Baby Group. If you come down to any one of our locations, we'll teach a little bit of what, about what there is to know about these factors and what you can do to prevent your baby from, you know, having some problems. We'll keep it running like new. It's going to be huge, New York. Huge! I was wondering about mostly specifically me. I've heard that when women are trying to get pregnant, they stop drinking. Now, is that because it increases your risk of fertility, or is it because there can actually be problems with the baby uh, on down the road? Folks, there's a lot of serious things you need to understand about alcohol. Do you see these physical defects on this baby? You, you need to understand something. 50,000 babies each year suffer from alcohol-related damage. 50,000 and an additional two to 12,000 will suffer from fetal alcohol syndrome. That is no joke, folks. Alcohol is a serious problem. Hey, I got a question for you. What happens if a pregnant woman doesn't provide enough good nutrition for her baby? Well, Nick, that's interesting. About one in every 14 babies is born of unhealthy birth weight. I didn't know it would happen that easily. Yeah, well, see this baby right here, Nick? This baby wasn't given enough nutrition during pregnancy and was born of unhealthy weight. Wow, really? I didn't know it was that frequent. It's rather shocking, Nick. About 12% of babies born to mothers who smoked while pregnant are born with unhealthy So, birth. you know, I was wondering, uh, my wife and I, she has diabetes, and we just weren't sure, like, can the diabetes be passed to our child? Sir, come over here, take a look at this brain I got here. This is the brain of the baby, you see the tubes? These tubes are very important. If your wife has diabetes and it's mismanaged, your baby is gonna be either getting too much insulin or too little, too little insulin. That's a big problem because it could result in mental retardation or possible physical hey, retardation. Bill, I was looking at these two babies here and I was wondering why this baby's eyes were darker than this one. Well, it's actually pretty sad, Nick. This baby right here was born with Down syndrome as compared to this baby right here who has pretty good eyesight, as you can see. This baby was born with Down syndrome, which one of the side effects is weak eyesight. Wow, Bill, that's, that's sad. I didn't know the eyes could be affected as well. Nick, it's very sad, and there, unfortunately, there really aren't many things that we can do to prevent this from so happening. So, me and my wife just found out that she is pregnant, and I have not a clue the procedure and all that stuff. Can you fill me in a little bit? Well, Nick, it's simple. The first thing that we usually tend to do is we'll bring the expecting mother in for what we call as an ultrasound. And all we do is we pop this hood right here, and from there, we can tell whether the size of the baby, the size, the structure, if they're going to have any um, deformities, things like that. We can also tell if the baby's gonna be huge. Let me take a look at some of my numbers here, Nick. Ah, all right. The average length of an intrauterine life is 279 days. That's from the day of conception to the day of birth. You have to make sure your wife keeps herself active. Being that she is pregnant, wouldn't it be bad for the baby if she was too active? You know, Nick, that's a common misconception. Your wife's gonna be able to take swims, she's gonna go for walks. The main thing is that she has to stay active. If she doesn't, that can be detrimental to her and the baby. Mike from Royal Baby Group here to send a serious message to all listeners. 5% of infants born each year in the United States are born from a mother who has used illicit drugs. LSD, heroin, and even the use of marijuana could have severe effects on your child. Make the right what decision. What do you think's wrong with this baby? There's, it looks like something's wrong on each end, or on this side of the baby. I'm not really sure. Folks, I see you're interested in one of our older babies here. Yeah, I've heard of babies being born without limbs. What would cause that? Actually, years ago, thalidomide was issued to mothers in order to prevent morning sickness. Later, we found out it was causing severe limb malformations, as you can see on each side of this baby. So, Phil, maybe I'm off my wits here, but why does this baby's feet look so different? Well, Nick, one in 700 babies in the U.S. each year is born with a severe form of talabies. Now this is, an, uh, this is a disorder in the feet where it causes them to form incorrectly. You know, this is caused by chromosome disorders in the manufacturers, mom and dad. So a simple flaw in the parents' chromosomes can cause 
such a, a, a different uh, malfunction? It's as easy as one flaw to cause this dramatic problem, Nick. Here at Fusillo Babies, we ensure that all our babies come out right. Hey, Bill. Uh, why is this baby's head here so much smaller than this baby? Well, Nick, during pregnancy, when the woman was getting x-rays, the excessive radiation from those x-rays actually has been implicated in microcephaly, which causes the head and the brain of the baby to form smaller than that of one that hasn't been exposed to as much radiation. So, Mike, I have one last question. Is it true that mothers with HIV or AIDS could pass the disease onto their babies? Actually, that is true. And there are three ways it could happen. It could be transmitted directly through the pregnancy, at the actual birth process, or while breastfeeding. How do you know, how would I know if my wife or I is uh, HIV positive? Well folks, come down to Royal Baby Group, we'll run some tests, take some blood, and we'll be able to send you out with the correct answer. I think that's something we should look into. Now remember folks, you leave this at the home of no, no hassle, no razzle dazzle. And it's gonna be you, Josh! <laughs> I like it. I hope it was recorded. It's now. Yeah. Testing, testing, up, one, two, hey, three. Hey, how's it going? Wait, you're not recording, right? No. no. <laughs> she was. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she was. <laughs> 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 About 12% of births. Uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, you just keep going. No. Finish it. Just say the huge part. Just say that this baby is not huge, oh. and then come towards me with the camera. 12% of infants born with their mothers who smoke are born with unhealthy birth weight. This baby is not huge. Yeah. Hey, folks. Mike here from the Royal Baby Group in Cortland, New York. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs>